want to ask uh, Ms. Rose, uh, the Copyright Office report did not distinguish between traditional creators, such as recording artists, and purely online cre uh, creators, such as those who produce content for YouTube or Facebook, uh, such as Mr. Beato. What makes the interests of such online creators different from traditional creators with respect to Section 512? Uh, thank you. Uh, I actually also am a fan of Mr. Beatos, so uh, I, I will uh, commiserate there with the occasional disappearance of his videos. Um, it's it's certainly they, there are uh, a number of points of difference between uh, what we consider sort of the more traditional uh, trajectories and traditional artists, and, you know, in scare quotes, uh, and those sort of new creators that we see uh, uh, emerging largely through online platforms. Uh, one is obviously the you know the method of getting your content uh, out to the public. Those are going to be governed by different systems. Uh, when you are, uh, a, you know, a traditional recording artist, you go, you know, you go through, you have a record label with publishers. Um, Mr. Beato completely makes his own content, releases it through YouTube, and thus is entirely subject to uh, the way in which YouTube has structured its particular implementation of things like monetization, demonetization, uh, and notice and takedown. Uh, and at the end of the day, a lot of these new creators, uh, Mr. Beato in particular, are really reliant on some of the provisions of fair use, uh, which is a built-in sort of safety valve to a First Amendment concerns uh, to alleviate some of the problems that would otherwise arise from uh, sort of total copyright control. Uh, in his case, it's you know education, criticism, and commentary is, is the bread and butter of what he does. Uh, and what he's been facing is a good illustration of the fact that these systems, uh, especially algorithmic ones designed in-house for specific companies to address their business needs, uh, cannot account for those things. Uh, they fundamentally can't. They are binary systems in a lot of ways, uh, and copyright is not a binary system. And so it's a, it's a poor match to say that really what we need to do is just sort of nerd harder uh, and develop better algorithms, and that will somehow take care of these things, because at the end of the day, they're just not capable of doing that. So. So when we look at Section 512F, and you've, you, you've been critical of, of, uh, of victims of abusive takedown notices that the, the provision of 512F are too weak, what would you say is a, a better way to beef up that for frivolous notices, uh, while not going so far as to penalize copyright holders who issue notices in good faith, which has turned out to be wrong? So I think the easy uh, or the lowest hanging uh, fruit on this is to uh, Lens versus Universal uh, decided that there was a subjective knowledge standard uh, for what constitutes good faith notice. Uh, changing that to an objective standard would be uh, far more enforceable uh, at a minimum. Okay, thank you.